Hello guys, uh, okay, I'm back, back online, uh, still just trying to tweak things a little bit. I hope this helps. Um, stock is still reducing and we have lost those we cut, so we have missed anything and I'll get it done real quick. So as you can see, one thing I've done is I cut all the mirror down, utilizing everything that I have, making sure nothing goes to waste. And the more even the size and dice with the bread, the better consistent product you have and more desirable uh, stuffing. And one thing about making stuffings or salads I like to practice is the idea of having 50-50 garnish, what I call garnish, versus the whole. So if I have an equal amount of stock and vegetable nuts and herbs combined, so the nuts, herbs, vegetable, and stock should equal the same volume as the bread. And then you have a really nice consistent product for the palate, the palate really work it really works well for the palate. Vegetables, you know, it's not overwhelmingly bread, just pure bread. There's more vegetable in it, so a little less. And word to the wise, you know, if you make salads, you make a tabbouleh salad or a quinoa salad or anything, if you garnish it, whatever it originally is, being a salad greens, and then garnish it with almost equal amount of garnished fruits, nuts, vegetables, dressing as well combined should all, you know, add up and almost in the ideal of weight. So I got the garlic in there. Garlic's already minced up. Carrots and celery are ready to go. I've got grapeseed oil for the pot. I'm going to work with grapeseed oil more often than not. It's very healthy. Good small point. So as you see, I've got my little large pot, something big enough I can put the broth in, put the mirepoix saute at all. Uh, once I get the mirepoix sauteing, I'll clean and strip my herbs. You'll see that real quick. And cooking this down a little bit will be nice. You know, get get the vegetables soft. Get the flavor out a little, uh, a little bit of the sugar out of the carrots and onions naturally, and uh, create uh, some caramelization to give you better flavor, better depth. And as you can see to the right, that's the your stain. We have the jus there, just nicely simmering and reducing away. That will be perfect for the gravy. I don't need a lot of gravy, and with all that stock and jus, I can definitely uh, 
uh, stretch it when I add the cream and whatnot. It's such a concentrated flavor. One thing I like to do when I'm sauteing vegetables and I'm cooking them down, I don't mind adding a little bit of salt. Of course, they say season everything, but a little bit of sea salt, basic, fine ground. And I'm not looking to pure, so say, season the full dish now as much as I am, as much as I am looking to extract or draw out the moisture from the vegetables. And the moisture coming out of the vegetables will cause it to um, the moisture of the vegetables will ca cause the sugars to come out and basically uh, come out as possible. Turn my temperature down on the vegetables just a moment and allow it to actually uh, sweat a little bit. And then I'll pull my herbs. save some time and stuff for the turkey later on. Same with the oregano for the turkey. In my stuffing I like marjoram. So I'm just going to strip this marjoram. Marjoram is one of those flavors that's very unique. Um, you know you won't get a lot of it. It's not very common. People don't use it mostly in Europe. Um, but yeah it's not as much it doesn't get as much play here in North America. So I'll pull a little bit of lovage. I like lovage chopped up for my uh, gravy at the end of it. When I'm finishing the gravy. Vegetables are sweated. Uh, I don't mind if they have a little bit of bite to it. Um, it's perfectly fine. And uh, now I'm going to add the stock and simmer that. Chop up these herbs and uh, dump it in. take some of the nuts. Now I can food process these nuts real fast as well.
test is running tonight, depending on how far you want to grind it. So I've got herbs. I've got herbs in the pot. The pot is about to simmer. I'm going to bring it to, I'm going to bring the pot to a quick boil, and then I'll just throw in the bread. I'll season the liquid to taste. I'll know once I've seasoned the liquid to the right consistency that I like, it should go well under this stuff. Instantly. Instantly that lovage is taken over. A little more salt. Uh, fresh cracked pepper for my pepper mill. So now it has everything we want. The nuts I'll put in with my bread. And the liquid is to boil. Vegetables, the herbs are all in. I'll bring that over to the table. You guys can see. I'll go into the bigger, I'll use the pot. That should be enough. So, as you can see, I've eyeballed it all. The bread will, the bread will absorb all that turkey stock beautifully. If I feel it's too moist, I can add more bread. This will help my stuffing set. Beautiful, look at that. Traditional. So once I bake it, it will dry up even more the more, the more moisture in the egg will come up. As you saw with the leftover stock, I can add it to this and make a little bit more. And on the other hand, I can bring it to here. I can add my leftover turkey meat. And that turkey soup. So as I said, about one liter of turkey soup. I just have to just have to season this liquid and then add vegetables and I have turkey soup for the week. Once again, all this from one bird. One ten pound turkey.
this makes life easy. It makes life easy when it comes to plating and setting up. Like I said, this is what we do in the restaurants. I may not do this. You may not want to do this at home. There's nothing wrong with a casserole dish. Putting it in a casserole dish. So as you can see, I kind of overextended my log. That's okay, because I'll just roll it in one sheet of tin foil. One sheet of tin foil around that. And then I bake it. So I'll go sheet of tin foil out the length so I can twist the ends. So, I think I left stuffing long. So once I bake this now for about 20 minutes, just to set the egg and allow it to all come together. So these logs now, once you've created this stuffing log, they can be put in the fridge or the freezer and saved for Christmas. So if you do it once at Thanksgiving, you may not have to do it again for Christmas. Focus on other things. Or you could have stuffing sandwiches. Some people put meat and sausage in their in their stuffing, which is totally fine. We trend more on the light on the meat side. Our stock is beautifully reducing. Let's take a look at it. Take a look at how much we have. And I think that that's a nice color in which I can make a nice gravy out of. So I'm just going to turn that off and we'll finish that later. Well, that is beautiful. Perfect turkey jus, really rich, really intense flavor. No additives, no preservatives. And we will be doing gluten free, so. 
which the stuffing came out. Well, something could be good for it, because good for bread, there's no reason why you can't change or alternate uh, breads, uh, quinoa flour bread, or flaxseed bread, buckwheat, there's uh, many different, there's many different types of, here's uh, the bread, you can buckwheat here, and there's no reason why you can't take those bits, apply the same method to the techniques that you just seen. Now, if you don't have saran wrap and you don't have tin foil, yes, do yourself a favor and use either a ramekin, a casserole dish, or a muffin tin. If you do muffin tins, you can basically put all of this stuff in. into any muffin too. Butter it or oil it and then just scoop and put and bake. And then they come out perfect medallions to save you this work as well. So forward on to dinner veg. So dinner veg. I'm put things here. Add some carrots and a Brussels sprouts which will fry and some yams. Brussels sprouts, when it's all said and done, the end, take it off, you'll see bugs, you'll see dirt. Want to rinse them off. Just take off more leaves if it's still too dirty. They're good. So once like so, for me to fry them, to do fried Brussels sprouts, I'm simply going to cut them in half. So I'm going to remove, discard any of the bad stuff. Once again, as I do this, guys, please let me know, ask me any questions. If you've seen it all before, I imagine a lot of you have, a lot of you know this stuff. Have no problem going over this stuff, the easy, easy things or the difficult things. Um, don't forget, we have the turkey in the fridge brining. Those are some of the things we've done. We've got the stock cooked and reduced. Just waiting to turn that into gravy, which would be gravy. Now let's just prep the dinner veg, and then we'll get on to desserts very shortly. See how fast it can be started. And yeah, a lot of excess. So don't be shy. Uh, we compost this. Uh, what can also be done if you're ever into making soups and stocks is uh, simmering these vegetable ends. The end, all your bits of vegetable ends, onion ends, and whatnot. You can turn that into stock at all times, and vegetable stock is a great thing to have in the kitchen. Cooking quinoa, man, cook your rice, your rice pilau with veg stock. Anything to carry flavor over, have more flavors, valuable.
this game of compost. So the carrots and the vegetables, you have a few options. Break, uh, blanch and roast, or just straight roast. And I'm a believer in uh, blanching and roasting. I think it's a better finishing product in the end of the day. But, you know, we're talking very small degrees of difference. Nothing that I think anybody should really fixate on. salt and butter, even a little honey, they're beautiful. I still have my uh, stuffing in the oven, I haven't forgotten about it. I don't work with timers. I do at work. Someone can bake that. Show you pictures of my sink. I'll not show you pictures of my sink. You don't need to see that. All right. So carrots on the bias. Long bias. I'll trim my little ring up there. All right, carrots. The bias. And once again, when I roast these, I'll be roasting the carrots separately from the Brussels sprouts. But um, I'll be deep frying the Brussels sprouts. I'll show you guys how to execute deep fried Brussels sprouts at home. I know that everybody wants Brussels sprouts, but only if they're deep fried. Anything deep fried is better. Everything deep fried is better. But the carrots and the parsnips, I'll cut on biases and. Uh, basically create spears and cutting everything you'll see the knife work about this uh, the idea behind seeing me in a knife is based on the idea because i had somebody say they didn't want to see me cut oh poor you guys seeing the mise en place so the prepping right uh, every chef is you know better if they learn to control this knife so and how to take care of vegetables that are not the normal, like a parsnip or a Brussels sprout. How do I uh, properly show you guys exactly how these vegetables, because we the goal is to definitely eat local. So as you see the parsnip, I put the parsnip, there is the center of the parsnip, which is very, um, What's the word? Uh, not as tender, a little more stringy. Uh, you can cut that off of the parsnip and you'll find the vegetable a lot more desirable. So, and this will set me up once again to do spears. So I've cut out the center, just like you would the core of a pineapple. Exactly the same idea as the core of a pineapple. Now you can cut these up and eat them, no problem. But if you look at the quality, better desire for your guests, just take that out. So I quartered the parsnip, 
you take a little bit and do the same with this one. Cut the portion in the corner, see the seam in which the core exists, and then remove it. And I've got these beautiful pieces. One more bracelet. tender product. So spears, like I mentioned with the carrots, it all fits in uniform. So now everything will cook evenly better. It's better for you. Many years spearing vegetables in restaurants making things uniform. So we will set up a pot now and we'll get ready to blanch these while we also sort out the yam and we're going to get ready for the pumpkin pie dessert. Uh, very classic. Our tart shells. I bought tart shells. I'm just going to throw them in the oven. I'm going to make roast, cut this pumpkin up, roast it off, and give it a go. And coming down to Thanksgiving dinner uh, with your friends and family at certain places and you know somebody's in a panic or anything, feel free to hit me up today. Uh, let me know if there's anything you need guidance with or help or understand it. Yam is the one vegetable I will I will not flesh. Yams break down so easily. They don't need to be they don't need to be blanched. They just need to be roasted. So I'll set these guys in a separate bowl aside. And but I will cut them the same size so that when I roast the yam with the parsnips and the carrots that I blanched, it will still cook evenly because it takes a while for a carrot and a parsnip to actually roast. Uh, they don't get caramelization real fast and in the time that you're looking to get caramelization and roast the yam, you can do that with a blanched carrot and parsnip. Yams. 
I think that's the name. Cheers. Check on the stuff in. And some of them you'll feel them expanded, they're really hot, they're just swelling, the steam is cooking inside. I'll let them go for another five or ten minutes. Back to the end. Spears that I got, same thickness. So I like my mixture of vegetables here, very fall, very seasonal. bias, the reason I cut them on the bias is so I can help it shape and look the curvature of the carrot and the parsley. And that's a decent amount of yams. And I'll throw those on a large baking sheet with the yam, with the blanched carrots. And so the next step is a pumpkin. We want to get ready to roast the pumpkin for the pumpkin pie filling. Very easy, very easy. So first up. I'm just going to get the ingredients, so we some sugar, brown sugar, and this, and in there, get the sugar, and what we'll do, prep a pumpkin, Of 
Christmas pumpkin seeds. If you want to pull them out, that's great. Toast pumpkin seeds are always good. And we get our kids on those. So there are a few different ways you can do this. You can, one, take the whole pumpkin in half, dress it with butter, oil, salt, sugar, and put it flat down and roast it. But I'm going to break it up. I'm going to peel this, break it up, dice it, and roast it. Just to show you guys a quicker, simple method. So to peel and break down a pumpkin now, which that mesh will go to compost and the strips. So I'll do the same thing for the butternut squash as I get the soup going. Squash soup will do the same thing. I'll break down the butternut a little bit and then just start peeling off the excess. So one thing you'll notice about cooking at home is definitely having a great tool and utensils. There's nobody going to tell you that that's not the truth. It's imperative to have a peeler, to have sauce pots and stock pots and the different size pots to execute the different things you want to do. You know, um, it's called investing in yourself and your kitchen. Um, but yeah, I know uh, even staples, down to the staples, uh, having oils and vinegars, having grains and spices, a spice rack. Uh, a spice rack is so crucial to doing good home cooking, you know. Uh, your flavor profile changes the minute you fry some coriander seeds and toast it, you know, and so valuable and uh, soulful, soulful. Obviously loving what you cook. I try to encourage my cooks to love it. If they don't know how to cook something, I just say love it, you know, like love it as if it was your own. So you guys are getting a quick demo here on a full Thanksgiving dinner, and uh, I hope that you guys can benefit from this from now to the end of time for as long as it exists. Uh, how I would do a Thanksgiving dinner and how you can do it at home. And I hope I proved and show that it's not so painful. Compost. Compost. So there are some things that you'll cut corners and cheat and get and you know avoid. Uh, I.e. for the pumpkin pie, I bought a tart shell. I'm not going to make tart shells as much as I could or would love to, not necessary. So here's your pumpkin. And my pot is boiling, as you can see there on the camera. Let me salt that water. I will season that water. So this is ready for blanching now. Then I will apply my uh, carrots and parsnips that I've cut up. The Brussels sprouts will stay up because we're just going to straight fry, uh, fry the Brussels sprouts. 
So just to get this out of the way, I'm going to click all the carries in the parsers. And because, because I cut them all the same size, uh, they should cook at the same time. Those are what's left. I'll put those with my yams waiting to be fried and roasted. And then what I'll do is I'll just have this bowl aside waiting for my blanched vegetables to come out. Of course. So flavor profiles for pumpkin pie definitely are the warm spices, allspice, nutmeg, clove, cinnamon. Cinnamon is probably the most prominent. If you love it a little bit more, you can add, you can add, what do you say, nutmeg and allspice. And I'll dig through my spice rack for those in just a moment. So, I'll get now into my tray. So as you can see, once again, no timer on my stuff. I'm just right here next to it. I'm not moving too far. I'll keep an eye on it. My oven is high, so my stuffing should be done any second now. I see set up and I'll let it cool and I'll let it cool. Once I let it cool, I just have to slice and reheat in the oven. So let's take a look at that and we'll put the pumpkin in as well. So I want to season the pumpkin with just a little bit of cinnamon. A little bit of oil to help it roast so it's not so dry. So I'm going to spice this out. My mobile jumbo spice rack, like most. Don't know what this one is. Masala. All spice. So the vegetables are nicely blanched in there. I'll pull those out in just a moment. You can pull them early, you don't have to cook them to a pulp. You can cook them soft or mush, or you can pull them a little bit earlier. I'll pull them a little bit earlier once I check them. So as with anything, you're looking for a little bit of bite and how soft is it to sort of bite. Beautiful, I'm very happy with that. It's a tender carrot. And if you don't want to overcook your carrots, what we do is we ice that. Now it's ice bath, I'll just basically take some cold water. Ice goes in. So pumpkins are dressed and a little bit of spicy and I'll get a little more cinnamon if you can find it. So 
someone mix sugar and eggs in with this after I blended it and get ready to make the pumpkin pie filling. So I will go in and roast it. These guys will come out. One of them has exploded as you can see, so my ice bath vegetables are there aside, no problem. Excellent. So, stuffing logs have exploded, one has exploded, not that enough. Let's see that, just a little bit of exploded, but the others are set, they're hot. Let's go, all that set on the stove and stay just like stuffing does. Alright, dinner veg is in, pumpkin is in. The roasting pumpkin. And all set to go. The main things pumpkin turf, pumpkin butter dessert is done. We move on to that in just a moment. Um, I'm going to pause there for a little minute and I'll be back in about 15 minutes to start the quinoa salad and butternut squirrel soup. And then we'll talk mashed potatoes as well. Because mashed potatoes is, is a big one. And we'll also finish the gravy. We've got a lot of stuff to go. Um, stay tuned. Feel free to review any of the previous videos. And uh, hit me up. Ciao.